146 billion, 342 million, 55,790, in respect of the votes contained in the first schedule, subject to paragraph uh, six, that is Committee of Supply. Four, makes the policy resolutions as contained in the fourth schedule. Five, resolves that the first schedule forms the basis for the introduction of the Supplementary Appropriations Bill 2024. Six, orders that the Speaker do now leave the Chair to facilitate the consideration of the state budget estimates with respect to each vote and program in the Committee of Supply as contemplated at the starting order 240, consideration of sup uh, supplementary estimates in the Committee of Supply. Honorable Speaker, I first of all want to thank this House because we have had a very rigorous period for the last two weeks in consideration of these supplementary estimates. Honorable Speaker, this is basically supplementary one. But in reality, and practically we know, this is actually the main budget. And I say so because, Honorable Speaker, this was occasioned by the fact that in this House we passed the Appropriations Bill, which became an act in hope and anticipation that the other side of the budget was to pass also. But, Honorable Speaker, as we all know, Kenyans requested this House and le the leadership that we look inwards and look for other alternatives. And, Honorable Speaker, that is the reason why we are coming to this House for Supplementary 1 even before the implementation of the budget. For the past three weeks, the government has only been uh, implementing that what must be done in regards to funding only the critical areas of the budget, where, whereas the other areas have been put in abeyance, waiting for this process, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, this House passed a budget last month of Kenya shillings, 3.992 trillion Kenya shillings. As we come before this House today, we are now having a budget of 3.88 trillion Kenya shillings. And therefore, there has been a decrease of around 111 billion Kenya shillings in overall. But, Honorable Speaker, this is not just the decrease. The decrease that I have talked about, Honorable Speaker, is based on two things. This House, after passing, then there was a wide gap between what we need to do in terms of filling in the hole of financing of the budget. And the only two alternatives, Honorable Speaker, for us to invoke. One was to borrow slightly more, which we have done, Honorable Speaker, in this budget, where we are now borrowing slightly more to a tune of Kenya shillings, Honorable Speaker, 767 billion, up from our country to continue borrowing, and especially increasing our level of borrowing. Why? The problem we have now as a country is based on the fact that in the previous years, we borrowed more than we ought to have borrowed. And therefore, the weight is now on us. Honorable Speaker, I was just talking to Honorable Mary Ann Kitani just here. And she's actually very mad by the fact that some of the expenditure lines, the, the, the Departmental Committee on Trade were considering, they felt they ought not to have been cut. But Honorable Speaker, this is a situation. And I am glad my sister, Honorable Mary Ann, is listening. This is how it is. And I actually conversed also with the Chair of Trade. I had seen him here today, this morning. Honorable Speaker, out of this budget, Kenyans, this is our country, and these are the bare facts that this financial year we are in, 2024-2025, as a country, will be spending 1.002 trillion Kenya shillings in payments of interest, rate, interest rates alone. Interest rates in domestic, uh, in out of domestic car, uh, borrowing and also foreign borrowing will be spending over one trillion Kenya shillings, precisely, I think, 1.002 trillion Kenya shillings. And therefore, Honorable Speaker, we may come here and read a budget 
of 3.88 trillion Kenya shillings as we are doing today. But the fact of the matter, even before we finish reading, we are already paying interest rates of 1 trillion Kenya shillings. Honorable Speaker, the money that we pay in terms of our obligations to the civil servants who have retired, Honorable Speaker, in regards to pensions, we are talking about over 200 billion Kenya shillings. And therefore, Honorable Speaker, even before we start negotiating about which projects to be done, 1.2 trillion Kenya shillings is off the table. Honorable Speaker, we have had also to do something unprecedented with the ammunition later. But out of that budget, Kenya shillings, 380 billion Kenya shillings, is equitable share. And therefore, Honorable Speaker, if we do the math, we see what remains. But even more surprising, Honorable Speaker, you know, when we talk about debt service, it is not just a component of interest rate. It is also a component of also the principle. The entire expenditure in debt, Honorable Speaker, is Kenya shillings 1.8 trillion. And therefore, Honorable Speaker, what you've been doing for the past one year, out of 100 shillings collected by Kenya Revenue Authority, Honorable Speaker, 61 shillings has been going into debt service. And therefore, we are left now to grapple on what to do with the remaining 39 shillings. And that is the reality of the matter. Whoever is on the driving seat, Honorable Speaker, whoever is in the National Treasury, whoever is in which other position, those are the grim realities. Honorable Speaker, what we have done this time, and I am saying we because as a country we came together and we decided we needed to rationalize our budget, is that we have done also something unprecedented. One unprecedented thing is to bring a supplementary budget barely before a month ends after the passage of the budget. But secondly also is the kind of cuts. The cuts have been done in all levels of government, and I hope that the members are uh, uh, keen on this. The cuts has, have been spread across the two levels of government. Honorable Speaker, even the county governments are losing 20 billion in their equitable share out of the realities that we face at the moment. Honorable Speaker, the cuts have also been across all the MDAs of the national government. And I want to assure the Kenyan people, we have cut all the flesh. What remains now is only the bone. Maybe in some areas, even the bones have been cut also. And I say so because, Honorable Speaker, we have made sure there is no money left for us who are servants of the people, elected, appointed, those who work for government. There is no money for travel. There is no money for hospitality. There is no money for ostentatious spending, Honorable Speaker, because that is what the Kenyan people told us to do. Honorable Speaker, we have also cut money across all the three arms of government. The executive is losing, judiciary is losing, the parliament is losing. And Honorable Speaker, I want to loud the members of this house, because we have come together and agreed these are difficult times. And for that reason, Parliament itself voluntarily, without fighting back, is being cut Kenya shillings, 3.7 billion Kenya shillings. And Honorable Speaker, this is hedged on many things. For example, when we were conducting the budget committee meetings, we did them around here in Parliament, Honorable Speaker. And I think this is a good thing for us to continue doing so that we continue cutting excess weight out of our budget and we also just live with the bare minimum so that we channel the other resources into the growth of our country and especially our economy. Honorable Speaker, this is the first time ever since I joined this parliament that NGCDF is being cut and members are clapping. Honorable Speaker, ordinarily, if any chairman of budget would study here and talk about cuts in NGCDF, Honorable Speaker, I think the motion would have to adjourn. But then these are unprecedented times. And that is why even NGCDF is giving up the increment that was, had been scheduled, Honorable Speaker, 
so that we first face the critical areas that Kenyans have directed. Honorable Speaker, we came here and moved 14.5 billion Kenya shillings that was to go into last mile uh, connectivity in terms of electricity. I also want to thank the Kenyan people and especially the members of this house because in unison they have agreed that that can be put in abeyance to be done at a later date and therefore given way for that 14.5 billion Kenya shillings. Honorable Speaker, much more has been lost, Honorable Speaker, because we need, as Kenyans have directed us to do, as their servants, that we must make a budget that has a semblance of money going specifically to critical areas. Honorable Speaker, there is something I also have noted across the days we've been meeting and re-looking at our budget. This country is rich. And Honorable Speaker, I believe this country has potential to raise much more. Honorable Speaker, Kenya is largely a country where most of the activities happen informally. And therefore, the informal side of our economy is much larger than the former one. And that is why out of Kenyans who work, Kenya has a working population of 20 million. But out of that, Honorable Speaker, only 3 million have pay slips. 1 million in government, that is in the public service, and 2 million in private sector. Honorable Speaker, those are, those are statistics that we must look at as Kenyans. That out of a pop working population of 20 million, Honorable Speaker, only 3 million are in formal employment. Then the problem of Kenya Revenue Authority starts there. Honorable Speaker, because when you have visibility of only 3 million Kenyans, then that is where you direct your revenue raising measures. And Honorable Speaker, what majority of the economies do when most of the economy is in the informal sector, then they come up with other ways of raising revenue. That is in terms of fees, in terms of levies. Because Honorable Speaker, if you cannot target people using the mainstream manner, then you have to raise money using the non-ordinary revenue, Honorable Speaker. Ordinary revenue would pay in pay, would pay in the uh, uh, income tax. But then, Honorable Speaker, we have seen there is much more opportunity to raise money in the non-revenue, non-ordinary revenue manner, Honorable Speaker. And Honorable Speaker, out of the sittings we had with the members of the Budget and Appropriations Committee, we have seen that Kenya can actually raise much more. And Honorable Speaker, I am glad you're also part of that committee. That in terms of a &A, for example, take two FADs, take tourism FAD, take tourism promotion FAD, Honorable Speaker. Currently, tourism is surging in Kenya. Tourism numbers are going up. But then we have made laws in such a manner, Honorable Speaker, that these monies collected by these FADs can only be used in a certain manner. Honorable Speaker, in our recommendations, we want to make amendments across all the entities of government that collect money. When you collect money from a Kenyan, that is public money. And if it's public money, Honorable Speaker, whereas the collector needs some money to keep them collecting more and being efficient, we must open up these FADs for these monies and especially the surplus to be channeled to the consolidated fund, Honorable Speaker, so that instead of borrowing, instead of overtaxing the, the, the former sector, Honorable Speaker, we can also raise much more resources through this fund, Honorable Speaker, they contribute to the consolidated fund. Honorable Speaker, sometimes it's a paradox that on this side, the government of Kenya is raising money through T-bills and boards. But on the other side of the supply side, it is some of the government money that is actually purchasing these boats. Honorable Speaker, some of these rigidities in law has to come to an end. We must open up all the funds. We must open up all the points of appropriations in aid so that these monies cannot continue to be spent in a singular manner. We open these money to the National Treasury to fund critical areas. Honorable Speaker, what do I mean? If there is an increment in a &A, for example, in tourism FAD, 
of Kenya Shilling is 3 billion. If there is improvement of ANA in communication authority, if there is expansion of revenue in the sports fund, honorable speaker, the surplus of this money could actually fund the 14.5 billion Kenya shillings we needed for last mile connectivity. But the way we have crafted our laws is that the money in the tourism fund can only be spent in a specific manner. If that then specific manner, honorable speaker, meets saturation level, then what happens is empire building. That the holders of those uh, accounts, honorable speaker, the accounting officers, then look for ways to spend. Whichever way to spend, money has to be spent. We do not have money as a country to spend money because it must be spent. We only have money. Even when we, were, we have been faced with this kind of a situation. We this time want to request this house through the departmental committees that the work of the budget and appropriations committee is basically like the work of the clerk. We listen to you, we do our best, and you know we've been doing our best. When there is a disagreement on especially the allocations, it is not the Budget and Appropriations Committee. It is the direction of the executive in terms of where the retro money that we have needs to go so that we take care of our economy. And I'm saying so because in the previous budget cycle, Honorable Speaker, we have always taken up to the last comma of what is presented in to the Budget and Appropriations Committee by the departmental committees. And we consult, Honorable Speaker. I make a point of also personally consulting with the chairs so that any change that is happening is not, is not below the carpet. Because the money we are dealing with, the departmental chair, Honorable Speaker, is my colleague. The, the, the member of a departmental committee is my colleague. It's not that we know better than them. It's only that sometimes when the resources are so scarce, there are some specific areas that need to be funded, and in all honesty, sometimes we have, that, we have to give that leverage to the executive because they, are, they spared us, the backstops there. And I'm being honest, Honorable Speaker, because this house has been very harmonious, and that harmony is important. But beyond now the cuts, Honorable Speaker, there are some things through the consultations with the National Treasury, departmental chairs, the members of parliament, the executive, there are areas, even if there are cuts, we decided they must not suffer a cut, Honorable Speaker. Because this country is in a place besieged. You know, Honorable Speaker, one of the tenets of economic growth, one, of, one is, is expansion of government expenditure then when you constrain government expenditure, the ramifications of that in the months to come would be a contraction of the economy. And therefore, whereas we are cutting also, we must also make sure there is enough money floating around and especially providing liquidity in the economy. But then, Honorable Speaker, we had to really cherry pick this, these areas and especially with the consultation with, with all the stakeholders. One of the area, Honorable Speaker. Education sector continues to take the bulk of the money because as a government, we are spending 650 billion to education. And Honorable Speaker, it is important for us to know as a country, Kenya is a democracy. And most of the democracies like Kenya, therefore have what we call a more, an open market economy, where then, Trade and economic transactions determine the prices of the market. But Honorable Speaker, to be honest to ourselves as Kenya, when we look at the weight of what the government needs to spend, the issue of Kenya being a market economy and a competitive economy therefore adds when the government starts. Because from where the government starts, 
Honorable Speaker, Kenya is a socialist state. It's social because, Honorable Speaker, you measure that by the size of government expenditure. 650 billion goes into education. Honorable Speaker, sometimes we wonder why do we have stored projects, ETC, ETC. Some of it is based on the responsibilities that the government has to conduct. One would ask, but the government has been doing these duties nevertheless. But that is not the fact, Honorable Speaker. When this government took over, the other governments had been afraid to implement, for example, CBC. When we talk about CBC, it's not just an education system. It is also a huge expenditure line. Because every learner in JSS, Honorable Speaker, is capitalized by government to a tune of over 10,000 Kenya shillings every year. Was that there before? It was not there before. Honorable Speaker, therefore, the government is spending 650 billion Kenya shillings to education. But what we have made sure that we have safeguarded, and I want to assure the members of parliament here, we have made sure that the monies to confirm the JSS in terms, all of them 46,000, has not been cut in the budget. And therefore, Honorable Speaker, we have provided the monies for confirmation to permanent and pensionable for the JSS in terms, because anything else can wait, but the JSS confirmation JSS intense confirmation to permanent and, and permanent and pensionable cannot wait. We cannot allow that to wait, Honorable Speaker. Second thing, Honorable Speaker, is in the health sector. We have provided 8 billion shillings because this house passed a law called SIF. And there are three facts that are in there that are very important for the implementation of the universal health coverage. We have provided 8 billion shillings to start working that journey, Honorable Speaker, and seed money for Kenyans to start benefiting from almost free health services, Honorable Speaker, through SHIF, which this House passed. And in that regard, also, Honorable Speaker, we have provided Kenya shillings, 3.7 billion Kenya shillings, for the confirmation of interns who are in the health sector, as Honorable Speaker for them to be confirmed into permanent and pensionable terms. Honorable Speaker, Kenya, part of the reason why Kenya is largely informal in terms of the nature of our economy is that we are still agrarian. And Honorable Speaker, this is not something to be proud of. When we measure the economy, we measure the economy using two things. One is economic growth, Honorable Speaker. And in that, Honorable Speaker, we do qualitative and quantitative. What I've been doing is reporting GDP and the rest. Those are, that is quantitative, Honorable Speaker. But we also need to look at the other areas around how people are, how the economy is performing qualitatively, Honorable Speaker. And I say so because majority of Kenyans are engaged in farming in agriculture. It is not something to be proud of because one of the measures of a country growing or economic growth of a country, Honorable Speaker, is having agriculture contributing less to the economy, not more. In fact, one of the definitions of an economy that has grown, of a developed economy, is an economy whose involvement of agriculture in terms of GDP is less than, less than 10 percent. Therefore, Honorable Speaker, however, we also have to look at where we are. We are a developing country, not a developed one. And therefore, most of the Kenyans are engaged in agriculture. What we have done in agriculture is, is this, Honorable Speaker. We have provided Kenya shilling 7.5 billion that will go into fertilizer subsidy. And this time, Honorable Speaker, fertilizer subsidy will be both for food crops and also cash crops. The coffee farmers, the tea farmers, 
the food farm, I, I mean the maize farmers and the rest on the speaker will have an opportunity to benefit from that fertilizer subsidy on the speaker. Second thing, we have provided money for coffee, cherry fad, Kenya shillings, three billion. And on our speaker, we have also provided money, two billion, to start pay, paying the coffee debts owed to coffee farmers, on our speaker, and coffee societies. On our speaker, we have provided money for sugar reforms, which we continue, on our, on our speaker, to provide for us to continue supporting our coffee, uh, our sugar cane farmers. On our speaker, we have provided Kenya shillings, 1.5 billion, to act as the defense of raw milk prices so that the, the milk prices, the dairy farmers, can get at least 50 shillings per litre, Honorable Speaker, every now and then, even when there is abundance of the feed, Honorable Speaker. We have also provided, Honorable Speaker, um, monies, 2 billion shillings, that will go into purchase of coolers. There we have a different program before, where Kenya was to have this program with Poland. And therefore, Kenya was to, to provide on return 10%, and then Poland was to give us 95% in terms of loan. Yeah, some three minutes to conclude, Chairperson. <laughs> Honorable Speaker, what you have done, Honorable Speaker, is to provide uh, 2 billion Kenya shillings that Kenya government will no longer rely on any other country. We want to buy these coolers as government and supply to the farmers of Kenya, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, there was a Maraga task force, Honorable Speaker, that went around the country to look at the situation of our security officers. Security officers are our brothers and sisters, but they continue to live in a manner, Honorable Speaker, that is subhuman. One, because as we know, they don't have a voice, they don't have a union. Honorable Speaker, this House has listened through the Budget Committee to the cries of our security officers, and we have input Kenya shillings, 3.5 billion Kenya shillings for enhancement of salaries for our security officers, Honorable Speaker, in line with the Maraga Task Force. Honorable Speaker, there are many things we have done including Honorable Speaker monies for aggregation centers, monies for, we have added around 2.5 billion Kenya shillings for aggregation centers. We have added EPZA 1.5 billion Kenya shillings for the, for the uh, factories, Honorable Speaker, that have been ongoing across six areas in Kenya and much more. As I come to the conclusion, I want to, th to thank the Kenyan people. This is a period where we must seize the moment, Honorable Speaker. And one way we are doing to seize the moment, the Kenyan government has over 334 entities, Honorable Speaker. Many of the regulations and the registrations we do in this house, we create new bodies. And Kenyan government continues to enlarge, Honorable Speaker. We create duplication. And in that regard, we have started to walk the talk. And in this budget, Honorable Speaker, we have denied 47 entities Money for operations and maintenance, Honorable Speaker, so that we hold them up, we match them together, so that we continue to have a lean government that is responsive to the needs of the Kenyan people. And Honorable Speaker, that exercise is saving us around 7.9 billion Kenya shillings. Honorable Speaker, at some point we have to ask critical questions in this house. In Muranga, in Taita Taveta, in Taita Taveta you'll have a Kera engineer. You will have a Kenha engineer. You will have a Kura engineer. Honorable Speaker, this House we will need to ask very critical questions. And especially when it comes to all these entities. Do you need a Kera engineer, eh, Honorable Mwago in Starehe? Do you need a Kenha engineer in the same place? Do you need a Kura engineer in the same place? Some of those questions, Honorable Speaker, are what we must progressively ask ourselves. And this cuts across all other sectors. The waterworks companies that we have in Kenya, the water industry on sector or, uh, uh, only, has got over 20 entities, Honorable Speaker. We have to ask ourselves, do we need these 20 entities or do we need to scale them down? These are critical questions. They are not in the budget now, but I'm just opening up a debate. Honorable Speaker, I beg to move and request the Honorable Mary Yamase.